theyeshiva.net. Good morning, everybody. We're up to page Yud Gimel. In Abhilil Parachas Maimer Isab Psikta. The last paragraph. Vizahu Kamoisha Pirish Rashizal Loyhoi Daiti. As we're exploring the transition from sheer number one to sheer number two in our long standing marshal. We need to explore the difference between Kale Hashem as Shindalad Yud and Hashem as Yud Kevavke. And we go back to the opening of Parshas Va'era, where the first thing Hashem tells Moshe is, the Elohim you're speaking to, you have to find out about him that it's Ani Hashem. Ani Yutke Vavke, step one. So the whole paradigm in which you're understanding the pain and the gullus is an erroneous one. You're coming from a perspective of Elikim, and that's what you're looking for, justification. You want to quit per quo, what did we do wrong, what didn't we do wrong, what's the punishment, etc. Vayoymere love, Ani, you have to learn about Hashem. <laughs> Now starts the explanation. Okay, fine. It's all chesed. It's all love. It's all intimacy. The teacher is not upset at the student. The teacher wants to give to the student everything. It's part of the relationship. The moment of distance is the moment of closeness. The worst of times is the best of times, etc. Everything we learned. Now give me the explanation. You're a teacher, so give me the explanation. This is Ve'edel Avram El Yitzchak Vel Yaakov Bekeil Shin Dalad Yud Shakai Ushmi Yud Kei Vav Kei Loi Noi Dati Lehem. That's the key. In the Chumash, in this Chumash, it's page one sixty-five, the opening of Ve'era. I appear to Avram Yitzchak and Yaakov with a name called Shin Dalad Yud, but my name Yud Kei Vav Kei I have not made known to them. Now. You know, such a type of statement in Chumash is a very rare statement. Like, you right away see it, it's all mystical. <laughs> you know, Hashem tells, tells Moshe is asked, complaining about the suffering in Egypt. In Egypt, So Hashem says, I appeared to them with one name, but they never knew another name. They know Shin Dalad Yud, they don't know Yud Kevavke. Yeah. Loi noidati lahem. So Rashi on Loi noidati says, Loi hoidati ein ksivkan. It says Rashi is going to be discussing. It doesn't say loy hoi daiti. It says loy noi daiti lahem. There's a big difference in Hebrew. If it would have said loy hoi daiti means I have not notified them. Hoi da'a, lo hoi dia, like lo hoi dia, right? Lo hoi dia levnei ha'adam gvoroisov, we say in Ashrei, it means to notify. From the word yidia, yidia means knowledge. Lo hoi dia is to bring that knowledge to other people. Hoi daiti is the way you say in Hebrew, I notified, yeah? In uh, in um, in modern Hebrew, they say "lohish arti hoda'a." I didn't leave a voice message. Yeah, tashir <laughs> moda'a or hoda'a. Leave a message. So he says "loy hoidati" would mean I was never moidia them. Be moidia. Tell them. Doesn't say this "loy noidati laham." I didn't become known to them that way. Why is that so important? It's so important because. The name Yud Kevavke is used in communication to the Avos. He can say, I didn't notify them. Hashem tells Avram, Ani Yud Kevavke, Shoytzisichim or Kazda. The Avos did. It, does, it doesn't always say, Ani Shindalad Yud. The word that's used with the Avos, so there's a, there's, a, there's a glaring paradox. You read in Pabratius, you see, he did identify himself as Yud Kevavke. What do you mean you didn't notify them? So Rashi says, Loi noi daiti. I notified, I didn't become known, meaning they never sought. I could tell them, you know, I could tell them my name is this and this. They never sought, they never felt it, they never experienced it. Huh? They never chapped it. They never, it. They, they never saw what it means. What they saw about me is Shindal Adyur. That, yeah. That's what they internalized, that's what they experienced. That was their relationship with me. 
which is it's in itself a very powerful idea. You could tell somebody from today till tomorrow, this is who I am, but they don't know it. <laughs> they don't see you that way because their experience is a different experience, right? Because they didn't experience it, they didn't grasp it to the full degree. Let's put it that way. Or because they didn't grasp it fully, they couldn't experience it. One of the two. Right, right, right. So we learned then in the Viadaita that Avram went from Shem Alekim to Shem Yudke Vavke by the Nisyonis Lamaila Manateva. But that's what we said in the previous paragraph that we learned on last Wednesday in, in, in page Yud Gimel that even though it says Vayere love, for example, Hashem Be Loine Mamre, right? Vayere love Yudke Vavke after the bris and other times. In Yudke Vavke itself, there's something called Shem Havaya de Lasata and Shem Havaya de Laela, which we will see there's a lower dimension of Yudke Vavke and a higher one. What's this Loinoi Dati? So Rashi says Loinoi Dati is Loini Karti Lam Bemidas Amitis Shali Shale Nikra Shmi Hashem. From a little literal explanation, which is always the function of Rashi, they never got to know me. They never got to recognize my truth, which is the reason I'm called Yudke Vavke. Rashi says the name Yudke Vavke represents Midas HaEmes, truth. Why they never get to see me with my truth? Because I made all these promises and I never fulfilled. So how could they see my truth? <laughs> you could see somebody's truth if he delivers. I never delivered. Rashi says, if tachti v'loi I never delivered. If I never delivered, they never got to see my truth. They got to see other stuff, but not my truth. You could tell them. I could tell them, I'm a truthful God. I will do. But they never got to see it. They never got to experience That's how Rashi understands. Bishmi Hashem, Yudke Vavke, Loi Noi Dati. Not Loi Hoi Dati, Loi Noi Dati. And those are the words. Loi Nikarti Lohem Bemidas Amidashali. I didn't become recognized by them through truth. In other words, they heard a bunch of promises. But they were still waiting for the fulfillment, so it didn't, the Makkah Patach didn't happen. They were waiting. Not that they didn't trust, they trusted. But they didn't see the full fruition of what uh, they have been looking for. And at last, from Rashi's perspective, he's saying, and now, Lachain Emar Levne Yisrael, Ani Hashem. Go tell the Jews, at last, deliverance will happen. Right? For thousands of years, yesh in the fact that the world has a beginning, was a chiddush. It was argued, right? Um, mainstay, Greek philosophy, Aristotle and others, which was the, the, the system that was thought of by many great philosophers for thousands of years, besides the Jews, was that the world was a kadma and it was always here. Today, from empirical experience, as much as that's possible to a certain degree, everyone, yeah, the Big Bang is the, is the, is the primary model of, of understanding cosmology. The Big Bang basically means that it all has a beginning. Yeah, it all, Pashat has a beginning. That means there was a point where it wasn't, and then there's a point where it actually began. That explosion called the Big Bang, that's it. That's one of the unique uh, elements of our times, 100%. The, the, the nicker. So he says, Kamosha Pirish Rashi Zal, what we discussed before about Shindalid Yud, Shem Shaddai, which is, the Gemara says, what Shaddai Sha'amar Loi Lamoi Dai. He told the world, Anof Koyachamagbil. So Rash, this is consistent with what Rashi says, Loi Hoi Dai Ti Eng Siv Kanela Loi Noi Dai Ti Loi Nikarti Bemida Samitis Shalei. What's the difference between the idea of Yediyah and Hakar? Yeah. Rashi changes when he explains Loi Noidati, Loi Nikarti. Loi Nikarti. Now, the don't think Loi Hoidati means I didn't, don't say, God is not saying I didn't notify them, I did notify them. But what they didn't have is what? Loi Nikarti. So Rashi understands the idea of Loi Noidati is. Not just the, the, the knowledge they had, I told them. If I told them my name is Yudke Vavke, so they know it. But they don't have a hakara. That's, that's how he, he pinpoints the point of the Pasuk. Loini karti. That's why he, he puts in a, a, a new, ver, a new, a new, a new term in Lashon Kodesh. It says loini dati. It says loini karti. What's the difference of Yidiyah and Akara? 
recognize him. Hayidiyah noifel behispashtus hadover, v'hakaruhu be'etzim hadover. Yidia, knowledge, relates usually to the hispashtus of something, which literally means the expansion of it, or I should say the reflection of it, or the way it's experienced by others. Hakara relates to the core of something. Fikmai, give an example, I have the Shabin Simon Latvius Ayan. If you look at Masech the Baba Metziah, Perik Eilu Metziah is the second Perik, which is usually the first many yeshivas, many schools, the first chapter of Gemara that they learn with the boys. There's something called Simen, something called Tvius Ayan. Simen means an actual identifying mark that a bundle of money may have, that a piece of chala may have, that a string, machrezes uh, shaldagim, stringed figs or fish may have. Or anything that you lost. A coat, a pen, a hat, or a watch. It's a simon. You have a simon. Simonim can include so many different things. It's an identifying mark. A, a unique mark that wouldn't, that would, would differentiate from other coats or other hats, even the same style, or other glasses or other pens or whatever it is, another jacket. Or another piece of challah or another bundle of, of dollars, another... Another another wallet or bundle of money. That's a simon. There's something called tviyasayin. Tviyasayin means your eye recognizes that it's yours. Hasimen hurak mikre hadover v'ispashtusa. A simon relates to the mikre hadover, to the circumstances around the thing and its ispashtus. The way it comes out, the way it's identified to another. Hatvias ayin who chikikas etzem adover commission it's dire ba'atzmus nafsha. Tvias ayin is that the core of the thing got engraved in you. It's like you have this inner recognition. You know when you're with something for a long time, you may not know a a, a beauty mark, a scratch, a color here or there, but you recognize it. You recognize it because. <laughs> It's like ingrained in you. The etzim minion is ingrained in your etzim. Where do you see the difference? Maybe it's some, uh, it's just, I'll see you see the difference. A simon you can share. Tviyas ayin you can't share. I could tell you what my simon is. I can't give you the tviyas ayin. Either you got it or you don't got it. I, I can't do it, sorry. A simon you could share. It's, it's an articulate, definitive, limited thing. There's a red scratch. I mean, I mean, how to read. There's a scratch, or there's a red line. Yeah. Obviously, if it says my name, it says my name. I mean, that's that's a very good sim. There's a fold here. There's a fold there. I wrote something on the dollar. Okay. I I I, I piled up like the Gemara speaks over there. I piled up the coins in a particular shape. I could give that over to you. I could send you as a shliach to go reclaim it. The sweater is torn. There's a hole in the back, a big hole in the back. You know, a mouse spends some time over there. It's a simon. What do I do with tviyasaya? <laughs> There's something you can't give over. Why not? If it's real, if you're real, we're going to give back an Aveda based on it. So say, say what it is. Best example is a person. Huh? Best example is a yeah. person. That's him. Yeah. That's him, yeah. Sometimes I mean, no beauty mark. I mean, no, this guy has two toe, two fingers and the feet are attached. Fine, there's some money. People have some money. She says, Haksimen yachel galoise bedibur avkshein achefetz befonov. The object is not in front of me, but I could explain it to you. I could reveal it through words. Mashen ken tviyas ayin i efshe legalos b'shum oifen bedibur. I can't give a speech and prove that it's mine. Kiyim kesha achefetz u befonov yachel akireh. If it's here, I'll know it. If it's not here, I don't know. Taka, we don't rely on Tviyas Ayin besides a special person. We don't rely on Tviyas Ayin because <laughs> I know it's mine. I know it's mine. Unless that person has tremendous trust. As the Gemara discusses above a Metziah. Generally, you need a simon. You need that external, external identifying mark. Yeah. 
uh, when you call the bank and you want to get into an account, yeah, they'll ask you all these funny things like, uh, which city did you date your wife? And uh, who was your best friend in third grade, right? And what was the type of first bicycle that you drove? Somebody says, uh, you, you need this simonim. For who, so what is Tvius Ayin? It's a general recognition. So what do you so what do you mean? What do you have Tviya Sayan for? There's no scratch. And there's no simon. So what's Tviya Sayan? Maybe you're delusional. Huh? What does that mean? So he says, It's a general recognition. It's not a detail, this detail, that detail. But seer koya chamedama shalamailam is chalkas isisamachavahadibu. It has to do with the tzir, imagination of Koyach HaMadama, the imaginary power beyond the fragmentation of letters and thoughts, of, thought, of, of letters in the realm of thought and words. When, some, when someone lacks the power of thought and speech, organized speech like an animal, Koyach HaMadama, Nechshav Etzlei Lubchisas. The imaginary power is considered inferior. Because it lacks the ability to be clarified and dissected and scrutinized and categorized as it comes in to the faculties of thought and speech. There's a certain lack of the intelligence the cognition that the human being that the human being has over the animal, which doesn't allow the animal to take its ideas or pictures that it sees and bring it and process it through detailed machshava and dibur. But if you have the koyach of machshava and dibur, then the power of imagination is actually considered a tremendous maila because it's the ability to picture something the way it is beyond the way it's spoken about, which breaks it down into details, and this is associated with das. There is an imagination and there's imagination. In many ways, the imaginary power is deeper than everything. It's like it's that general grasp that relates to das. That's what koyach hatsir is. The power of imagination is imagining something beyond the way it's scrutinized and dissected into details. So a balchai, an animal who doesn't have the koyach hamachshav of a hadibur, koyach hamedam is not considered a maila because it's very nebulous and ambiguous, and that's why the animal is not capable of doing things and implementing things like humans are. On the other hand, somebody who has the ability to be mechalic things in machshav and dibur. Then the koyach of dimyan, the koyach of imagination, the koyach of tzir, the koyach of art in their mind, which allows you to grasp the truth of it, the way it is, that's a gewaldik maila. It's a, it's a superior quality. People don't have an imagination power, are often very detailed oriented. Everything is encyclopedic. It's about facts and data. The imaginary power is called a tfiyas ayin. Even in, in other words, in understanding an idea, there's a simon and there's a tvias ayin. There's understanding an idea in terms of details, like you have all the facts, but you know what you're missing? You're missing this. <laughs> that uh, the picture of it, the whole picture of it, that's what tvias ayin. Tvias ayin means I just know it. I know how, how, how? tell me how you know it. <laughs> it's, not, it's, not, it's not made up of pratim. Das is not made up of pratim. Das takes you back to chachma. We learned that chachma is the klal before the pratim. Bin is the pratim after the klal. And das is the klal after the pratim. So if you don't have pratim, then the klal is not a maila. Because it's just very nebulous. But when you have the koyach of pratim, then the power of imagination, the power of tzir, the power of tvias ayin, it's not about the details. It's a certain tfisa. You have the etzim of it. You have the core of it. Beyond pratim. Details will never lead you to the core. That's why you have people who know everything. Well, what's the expression? There are people who know the price of everything and the value of nothing. <laughs> right? <laughs> Or oh, what Heschel once said from Yeshua Heschel, today people are reading more and more about less and less. 
You know, I could read everything. I know everything. I know, you know, people who know maps, they know the globe backwards and forwards. <laughs> but the map is not the territory. The map is lines and lines and more. You know everything about, you know exactly that Italy is a boot. But you never put on the boot. <laughs> you never touch the soil of Italy. <laughs> You know everything. You know more about Italy than Italians. You know how tourists come to New York and they've been to places that New Yorkers have not been their whole life, right? It's a fact. Nobody knows, anybody who grew up in New York knows very little about New York. But you're a New Yorker. With Alamir Shagassen. Or uh, Rockland County or, or Munsiite, whatever it is. Yeah. Describe this place to somebody who You know, uh, you, you could sit with, 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 with a therapist, with a friend, and tell them all everything that happened in your house growing up, right? Your sibling, you just take a look. <laughs> you look at each other, you know, you grew up. <laughs> you, don't need, you don't need words. It's a, you, you know it like this. You felt it. You experienced it. This is, this is who you are. You know? It's, it's your genes. Your parents are your genes. It's your etzim. So on one hand, from an from a encyclopedic and scholastic and more detached place, well, I don't know what you're talking about. Give me data, give me words. And here, we'll, this is such an important idea because in one world, it's thoughts and words that give something cr credence. A, a scientist is going to get up and deliver a paper based on Tvius Ayin. He'll be laughed out of the room. On the other hand, without Tvius Ayin, you're missing the atom. <laughs> Yeah. Das means I know it's true. Well, how? How? So if the das is lacking the ability to be broken down, we can't respect it. I know it's true. Fine. It could also be called mishagas. It can also be called delusion. It can also be called chalas, a sickness. And you have to be. You have to be careful. People say, I know it's true. Yeah, people declare themselves as the Messiah and they declare themselves as saviors and they have visions and they have voices and they need a lot of help. Which is why we challenge it. We want to break it down, prove it to me. On the other hand, if you can't get back to that place, you're missing something essential. And that is, I just know it. How, how? Okay, we'll discuss how. But the how will never get you to that place of just knowing it. Even though the how is important. The makeup and the, the and the details and the scrutinization and the laboratories and the testings and the experimentations. All good. All's good and fine. You need it. That's the Maila of the Adam over the Balchai. But then there's Kaya Chadas. That's Tviyasayan. So he calls it, it's the Chikikas Etzem Adavra Be'etzem Nafshay. The core of it is engraved in your core. I just know it's him. Yeah. The impression is deeper than the details, yeah. Vayakir Yosef Asach of Hemla Yikiru. But there Rashi says it's the beard. So that's a simon. <laughs> right. You're saying they never had a Tviyasai in Yosef. <laughs> that's what you're saying. They never had a Tviyasai in Yosef. Okay. Avala kol ponim muvan. But what do we understand from this? The way, every, any way you want to explain this, because this is like a subtle concept. Shegeder yidia who bedover sheefsher laachedim lahidia bedibur bezchalkos. What's the definition of yidia? Something that you can share with others through words, meaning it can get broken down. Words means it gets broken down into details. That's the koya chadibur. Koya chadibur is to take something. And break it down, and break it down again, and break it down yet again, and break it down yet again. That's the power of Dibur. That's what Dibur does. It takes a concept and breaks it down. Which is why before you communicate something, you really got to understand it. And when you understand it, you can break it down and say, okay, this is how we build. Mamish like building, building a home. It's layer after layer after layer, piece by piece by piece by piece. You're constructing, like you're constructing a piece of music, you're constructing a symphony, you're constructing an edifice, a mansion, you're constructing a speech. It's construction. Construction is always his chalkos. 
The Rambam in Hilchah Shabbos describes the Malach of Boina, what's building. It says Boina is you take piece by piece by piece by piece and you bring it together. Which is why he believes that curdling milk into cheese is Boina. Is a Malacha, it's part of Boina building. In any case, so that's what the Dibur is. So things that you can communicate that way, like a simon, that's called Yediyah. But that means that you're never capturing the core of it. You're capturing various aspects of it that are authentic, but it's never the etzim. You know, you have to go pick up somebody at the airport, but you don't know him. So I give you the identifying marks about him. I give you Simonim. Who Belavushov, maybe his garments. You know, you'll say he has a beard, he has a hat, he wears it. Vitoyaroy, his looks. He's tall, he's short, he has this type of look, this type of face, this type of complexion. Ukahai Gavna, or different types of things. Shubaderich Mikri. It's all the circumstances that, yeah, define his life. They define his physique, his external physique, his body, his, his skin, etc. If that person would want to take off all his clothes, <laughs> he'll change all the someone. You won't recognize him anymore. Because the recognition is ultimately from Chitzainius. And therefore he can also change it, which is what spies and others do. They change all the identifying features. So there's no feature that you could say, ah, hoo hoo. But then I say, you know what? I'm not going to describe to you who he is. Here he is. No, he's here. Take a look. Once you see the person, what do you see? You see a nose. Yeah, you see a nose. You see a hat? Of course you see a hat. Do you see glasses and a beard? Yes, yeah. Do you see if he's skinny, if he's slim, if he's petite, if he's fat? If, of course you see everything. You don't see less than you heard from the person, but something else you see. What is it? You see the mensch. You see the etzem. The etzem is not something from simonim. It's not simonim. You see the etzem. You see the core. So you say, well, what are you talking about? What? So tell that to me. Why can't you say that core? What am I supposed to say? <laughs> I could talk about a nose. I could talk about clothes. But how do you describe that? I can't describe it. Sorry. Then the picture of this person will become ingrained in the mind of the person who observed him that even if he goes through many changes, he could still recognize him. That's the mashal Rabbi Litzman you just gave. It's been years. You became older, Right? Now, people will often also say it about, they'll also attach that to Pratim. They'll say there was something in your eyes, right? There was something in your eyes that I recognized. Huh? Right. There was something in your eyes, something about your pain. There was something about your smile. There was something about your smile, you know? <laughs> but even that is how you're justifying it to yourself through your words. That's also a simon, it's just a deeper simon. You're justifying it to yourself by saying, oh yeah, there was a simon, your eyes. But the truth is it's even deeper than that. There's a certain atzmi, is the vibration that you're experiencing. This is called hakara versus yediya. This is recognition. Tfiyas ayin. I just have my, my eye recognizes it. It's, it's not yediya. Yediya is data. Hakara is etzem. That's the key. Yediya is data. Hakara is etzem. Core. How do I give that over to you? I can't, sorry. <laughs> I could give data. I could give the words. It's all here. It's perfect. It's the simon. But I, all I gave you was his pashtus. Very important. Very important. Spashtus is important. Spashtus is the way it comes out, the way it's experienced. So we always speak about the rays of the sun, right? The way we experience the sun. I don't have the sun. I can't give you the sun. But I could point to its powerful rays that light up our home and give us warmth 
and give us light and allow us to exist. That, that's big stuff. Ispashtus is not a small thing. Ispashtus is the way something reaches me. Lehispashet means to extend, to expand. In other words, the way I experience it. I look at you, I need a simon. Okay, you have this color here, you have this color, this, you have this. that's Ispashtus. And you could relate to yourself also that way. <laughs> there's relating to yourself with your Ispashtus and there's you relating to yourself with your etzim. Some people, all they know about themselves is the espashtas. They know themselves from the simonim they give themselves. Now, you know yourself with your simonim much better than anybody else, but it's still simonim. You know yourself from your simonim. You don't know yourself from your etzim. And you have a car on. You never excuse. No. This, I can't give over bedibur. The Dibur can allow that a person should use the words and reach their own Hakara. But this is a very deep process. I, I'm, I'm, you see, I'm having a problem even explaining it, right? Because I don't know what to say. Either you get it or you don't get it. And if you don't get it, I can give another marshal and another marshal and another marshal and try to prove. It's not something I can prove. Show me in a laboratory the difference. Show me. I don't know what to tell you. Maybe you're right. But you know when you know something, right? <laughs> you know when you know something. You just know it. <laughs> and the, the expression in, the, in Chumash over there is, Vayaker, Yosef es Echa Vehem Loi Hikiruhu. They didn't recognize him. That's very... Some of them weren't there, and they should be tzaddik because of the Zaka. So at least they should rely on that Torah. The Hem Loi Hikiruhu, unfortunately. There was no Hakara. There were no Simonim and there was no Hakara. He spoke Egyptian. <laughs> he was dressed in this uh, prime minister garb, right? He was running an economic superpower. <laughs> this is not our baby brother. It's not our baby brother in yeshiva in Hebron. Especially if they didn't believe in his dreams. They couldn't be Vada. That's where there was no Hakara. They never got him. They never got him. So this process, we're talking about simon and tviyas ayin, is not just true by an object. It's true about everything in life. Everything in life, this is really a model for so many things in life. Sometimes we can speak about hispashtus, 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 but we don't touch the etzim. Now again, I'm going to emphasize that what, that, what, what he said. The animal has imaginations. Animals have hakara. It's koyach adimyan, it's koyach hatsir. Sometimes you, when you're in the world of imagination, you imagine things very strongly, very vivid. You paint a picture in your mind of something. And it's not detailed, it's not dissected, but it's very, very real. That's why people who have a kaya chatzir can describe things in ways that others don't. You know, some people tell stories and you know you're hearing a story while they're saying it. Some people tell stories and you're there. What's the difference? Some people tell stories, you'll never be there. You'll hear, you're hearing a story. You're hearing data. This, it's interesting. Last Tuesday, I was here. This happened. Sometimes you hear a story, and you're there. You push it there. For five minutes, you're glued. You're, you're mesmerized. You're, you're experiencing almost the emotions of everybody that was there. What, what's the difference? This is called in Lashon Kodesh, Koyach Hatzir. It's a Koyach to be Mitzay or something. It's a Koyach to transplant that reality into the present reality. It's not the details. It's the ability to paint that vivid, vivid image of it, that reality of it, and impart that. And what that does is, it allows people to come in contact directly with that experience. That's a very, very powerful koyach in terms of your own understanding vis-a-vis -vis yourself and in terms of your communication. People ask me sometimes when they say speeches if they should read them from paper. If they should read them. Some people are mocked but to read word for word for word. Okay. So if the President of the United States and a mistake in a sentence could cause a world war, you got to be careful, right? So you have a teleprompter, it says. Generally speaking, when a person reads, the most they can give the people is the simonim, nothing more. Because what I'm giving you is the word, word for word for word. That's what you can give. You can give the simon. 
Which is why, if at all possible, it's good to throw away the papers. <laughs> to give a little more of etzem. Now, it's good to have points so you know what you're saying and all that. But generally, reading a speech off paper limits it. It limits it immediately. First of all, the eye contact gets limited. But even if you're a professional and you can pick up your eyes, there's, you could feel that there's a certain energy that doesn't come through. Because I'm not getting you, I'm getting your words. Because I'm just reading off words. I can also read the same words. It's just not the same. It's not the same. It's better to make 50 mistakes and give them your soul than not to make a single mistake and give them a dead piece of paper. It's just a different experience. People get the words. They didn't, they didn't get you. They didn't get the soul behind the words. And it's a different impact. You'll see it immediately. It's a different impact. I'm not judging people who read speeches from paper. There's like a, if you had a science uh, conference and a... Over there, the more boring you can be, the more scientific you are. Some people think if, it, if, you're, if you're interesting, it must be stupid. It must be a psychobabble. It must be drama. It's Hollywood. If you're really boring and dead, you must be brilliant. Me, me on my cane, who says? Everyone has to fall asleep for it to be brilliant. Ah, huh? <laughs> it's called reading a paper, right? Delivering a paper. That's what they're delivering a paper. <laughs> they're not delivering an an Indian atzmi. <laughs> the Lubavitcher Rebbe once said that if and it was a very cute story. He said that a group of students came into him, secular students. It's to come a lot. Students used to come in the earlier years, fifties, sixties. Shlomo Kalbach used to bring a lot of students. A lot, a lot of students would come, and the Rebbe, they would ask questions. So he said that one of the students asked him to describe what a Rebbe is. What is a Rebbe? He said by publicly. I started to say, they all took out their, their uh, notebooks, and they started to write, and they wrote everything I said. So he said, Rebbe. <laughs> They went out of the room with a paper Rebbe. <laughs> they went out of the room with a paper Rebbe. First taste. <laughs> That's the difference. You write everything, you write everything. <laughs> a big psychiatrist once told me, it was a patient who came to him. And he was a brilliant fellow, and he sat down the first uh, fast session. And uh, he tells him all the problems. And the psychiatrist, who was also a psychologist, starts analyzing. So he takes out a pad or a laptop and he starts typing. He says, listen, <laughs> in this office, you're not typing a word I say. Because that is what's going to create the greatest barrier between you absorbing the message. You're going to have all the information. You're going to know your problem. But you're not going to experience your problem. He would not let him. He says, but I have to remember. He says... He, so the psychiatrist uh, told him, I told him, huh? he said, you want to record it, record it. But uh, he said, I would rather you forget 98% of what I say. But 2% just goes into you. It just goes into you. Then you remember everything I say, but nothing becomes you. And it's a marvelous distinction, marvelous. Because don't use any, forget everything. But that one thing I'm going to say is going to... Right? It'll resonate. And you do, you'll know it's true. You know, he's going he's gonna to touch on something that you know in your gut. And that will change your life. You'll become aware of it. You'll have all the data. I have this problem, this problem, this problem. My mother, my father, my brother, my sister, my teacher, my community, my genetics, my addiction. Else! But you, go, no, you know nothing. <laughs> you know everything and you know nothing. I have it on paper. I have everything on paper. You have all the information. And in a way, that's very dangerous because if you have no information, at least you know you know nothing. When you have all the facts, now you think you're an expert. But what's missing is Kaya Chadas. 
The Bistoifus, you Toifus, what I'm saying? Dr. Michelle, you Toifus? Am I being scientific enough? <laughs> I'm not, okay. I, I, uh, I acknowledge. You could be scientific and make that more excited about that. Dr. Michelle, put the pen away. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I know. I, this was not a protest against people who take notes. Halavai, some other people would take notes. It wouldn't be so bad for them. Not Nochem, not you. <laughs> huh? He's sitting with a laptop. He's sitting with a notebook. He's sitting with a pen. You're sitting. It's fine. That was not, this was not a uh, <laughs> critique on people. And a shir, it's very powerful to take notes, as those of you who take notes know. But it's, the point is, it's not the notes, you understand? <laughs> the notes have to take you somewhere else. So that's what, the, that's loyni karti. I could know everything, but I was not, I, I didn't recognize it. The etzim of it never went into me. What I know is hispashtus. I know all the simona. All the simona I know. It's true with Yiddishkeit. You could know all the simonim of Yiddishkeit. What's the simonim of Yiddishkeit? Kadesh, Urchatz, Karpas, Yachatz. But all of Yiddishkeit has simonim. Yeah? Simonim is basically, I could know everything. I know everything. Everything. I know, like I know, simonim of a lulav, simonim of an essence, simonim of a hadas, simonim of chitzitzen, simonim of... Everything has simonim. But I wasn't toif as the etzim. In every Nakuda you have it. <laughs> you can get away with murder. You can get away with murder, I guess. Okachol ha mashal hanal. This entire mashal move on a havdal. Sheben hoidaitiv. Shogeda yidiya. Ah, if this is true in everything in life, where does it come from? It comes from the source. There's completely two different ways of relating to truth. And the source of truth, the essence of truth is what we call Hashem. There's his spashtus eidin soif lamata ba'olamus, which literally means the impact or the expansion or the effect of infinity down here in all the worlds. Lamata doesn't only mean here, it means below anywhere. Shazo dover she'efshe lohidiya lachir. This is the aspect of God you can actually let others know about. Kamay shakasim, it says about Avram Avinu. Hashem says, why do I love him? Ki yedaitiv, I love him. Yedaitiv, Rashi says, is Loshen Chiba, right? I love him. Laman asha yitzava es bonav es bnei bei beisoi v'shomru derech Hashem lasas doko mishpat. And by the way, it says the Yudke Vavke. Why do I love Avram Avinu? Because he's going to give his family and his children the way of God. He's going to bequeath to them the way of Tzdaka and Mishpat. That's why I love him. That's why I love about Avram Avinu. This is something that can be sheared. You could share your principles, you can share your values, you can share your ideals, you could share your God. Which God can you share? You can share what's called his pashtus erin soif. Shabakhlal hu inyan shem havaya de lasata, when he says Vishamru Derech Hashem Yudke Vavke. It's referring to what's called Shem Havaya de Lasata. What do we mean Shem Havaya? The lower Shem Havaya. Shenikra Havaya al Shem Shu Mahava Oilamus. Why is Hashem called Yudke Vavke? Yudke Vavke means Yahava. Yud He Vav from the word Haya, Hoive, Yir. All it's the same thing. Being, existence. Lahavais means what? To bring into being. Mahava Oilamus means he creates the reality of the worlds. Mahava means he brings all of universe, all of the universes into being. They become. That's what Yudke Vavke represents. Mahava. Mahava means he makes it hoya. He is. It isness. It becomes a mitzvah of is. Shemehisavhusam nucha de kayacha mahava. That's the key. When you study creation, when you study the product, you get to know a lot about the one who generated the product, the one who brought the product into being. It means here that Avram was able to share And Avram could share. This Shema Vaya, which is Mahava, with the world. And of course, with his family. 
And that means there's derech havaya, there's the path that that demands. If there's a creator, what we call today ethical monotheism, right? If there's a creator, that means the whole world is indebted to one. It means the world is connected. Don't take this for granted. This was a revolution. The whole world is connected. It's still a revolution. <laughs> the whole world is connected. You and I are connected. Every creature is connected with every other creature. In America, we're told that there's self-evident truths. What are the self-evident truths? That every person is entitled to what? To life, liberty, and pursuit of happiness. Well, I don't mean to disagree with uh, Dr. Jefferson, but for most of human civilization, this was anything but self-evident. <laughs> it was never self-evident. Man eats man, dog eats dog. That was self-evident. So thousands of years, it wasn't self-evident. Yeah, in the 1770s, suddenly, whoop, it became self-evident. It became self-evident because of Avramovinu's blood, sweat, and tears. It became self-evident. Of course, it's self-evident. <laughs> you go to North Korea, it's not self-evident. In the Soviet Union, it wasn't self-evident. In the Greek Empire, and Russian Empire, Roman Empire wasn't self-evident. In the Egyptian, Babylonian, Persian Empire, Byzantine Empire... Greek, nothing was self, this was self-evident. Everyone is entitled. There are slaves and there are lords. So I'm saying this is not a small feat that from the Bria to be able to go back to the Mahava and say there is a unity in the world. Well, yeah, yeah. Him yeah. habrias, Right, Hashem says, famous Rashi in Chayisara, till Avram Avina, I was a God in heaven. He's the first one who made me a God on earth. That's all Shem Avaya de la Sata. From his Havos to look at the blueprints, to look at the imprint, I mean. Which is basically what the good FBI agent does. He comes to Rahman al a murder scene, and he's looking for the footprint. Right? He's looking for signs. And he finds them. He finds them. A strand of hair, a direction, how he went in, how he walked out, a footprint, a little saliva, whatever. A piece of cloth. He finds it. And what does he do? He traces back. He traces, I mean, and I'm using a very, you know, obviously tragic muscle, but the concept is very powerful. He traces back the scene to the creator of the scene. And hopefully he puts him in jail, puts him away. You understand? That's basically what we're talking about. That's called a simon. The world is filled with simonim. <laughs> it's called DNA. <laughs> it's called a cell. The world is filled with simonim. Endless simonim. Oh, I see you. I see you. And God says, look at those simonim and you'll see that it's my world. <laughs> it's not a hefkevelt. I, they're arguing that it's not true. The world happened by mistake. Okay, study a little more and you'll see. And today, the more we learn every year, every year, the beautiful Malbim, the Malbim says, Dur le dur yeshabach masecha. It's like a Valdeke Malbim. We say in Ashrei, Dur le dur yeshabach masecha. Which means, literally, Ugvure secha yagida, right? Generation to generation, your maisim are praised and your strengths are being told. So he says the word shvach in Hebrew means praise, but it also means, right, in, in, in Babakama you have in Gemara like shvach peres, appreciation. The price goes up because it gets better and better. Real estate. In 1960, you could buy a house, huh? Art, yeah. Could buy a house for ten thousand dollars today. The same house is worth three million dollars. That's what shvach is. It becomes better and better. Meshubach. It becomes more, which means more praise. It's connected, more praiseworthy. So the Malbim says, "Dor le dor yeshabach masacha." As the generation, because every generation, your ma'asim go up in appreciation. We appreciate more what we see. Not very long ago, they thought that a cell was such a simple thing, it was not an issue, that it just came here randomly. 
Today, it's very hard argument to make that that cell just emerged randomly. It's just, it is beyond complexity that people can even imagine. The most complex computer, the most complex supercomputer, the most complex F-16, the most complex structure that takes years to build pales in comparison to that single cell. Beyond statistical possibility, very well. This is called a simen. A simen. What's the simen? The simen that is a boyre, there's a koyach a boyre. Avram Avinu was the man who preached this. This is what he taught the world. In that sense, he was also the first real scientist. Looking for the clues, looking for the truth, and looking for the string theory, looking for the idea that there are laws of nature. It's not just some ghost or some god of the wind is in a bad mood, so there's a thunderstorm. And now the god in the water, you know, lost his girlfriend, so there's a tsunami. And now the god in the fire is upset at his mother, so therefore there was a major fire. And the god of the volcanoes is really angry because he lost his job, so there's a volcano. And the god of the earthquake. And therefore everyone needs their sacrifices to appease them. I mean, the whole pagan philosophy, how it worked. And this was the hasaga of the Avos. This was the comprehension of the Avos. And their avoid, Ratzai v'shoiv. Ratzai is yearning and returning. The gematria of Torah. Torah is taste tof vav Is 611. The gematria Ratzai v'shoiv. The yearning and the retreating. Shal zanemar kiyem avram avinu es kol ha doesn't only mean kalatayr, it means Avram Avinu lived in a state of ratzay and shayv. Ratzay is yearning and shuv is returning. V'zeha nikrikan of b'shem keil shadai, shuhu makar ha-gvul. Shin dalad yud shadai, I said, that's the source of gvul. In other words, I know God from the universe. I know God from the oilam, from his product, from his work, from his handiwork. I could say, ah, take a look. He's saying a, a huge Kiddush in this Pasuk. Because we learn this Pasuk always. He's now saying that Kel Shaka is really the Shem Avaya de Latata. Yeah. But Shmi Hashem means the Shem Avaya de Latata. De la Eila, which we'll get to, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Okay. Mm-hmm. The yeah. That's the vart. We sometimes call it another simon. When you say, I see it in the eyes. But the vart is that it's not simon. It's a different gedin. It's not simon, is all protem. It's true, it's all his pashtas. That's the vart. And fias ayin is the etzem. So that, is it an etzem seeing an etzem? Yeah. He says, etzem adover nechak ba atzmos nafsha. So AI can't pick it up. Artificial intelligence can't capture that. That's the difference. Today, this is so important because science is this, this struggling. What's the uniqueness of humanity after artificial intelligence? They're going to they're gonna take everything away from us. <laughs> they work seven hours, seven days a week, 24 hours a day, no vacation. No stress, no anxiety. They don't get angry at the boss. Yeah, they're never in a bad mood. They never show up late. <laughs> but AI picks up emotions. Huh? AI picks up, not just emotions. I know, it picks up everything. <laughs> it picks up everything. <laughs> it picks up everything. <laughs> but not the essence. <laughs> this, without this Nikuda, artificial intelligence is everything. That says nothing left. Well, for most people, that would be everything. Fine. You typhus? They get every they get emotions also emotions also have some on them. I, I, I can monitor you. Yeah. Especially today with, with, with a, MRIs. Yeah. This part of the brain lit up, right? You're stressed, you're relaxed, you're anxious, you're nervous. It's all there. It's just, today the inside is the outside. <laughs> with technology, yeah, you see what lights up in the brain, what's functioning, what's operating. And that's really the struggle of the last few decades. We know everything. So why don't we know everything? 
because we know all the protum. We know everything. So why don't we know everything? We know every emotion. It used to be everything was mysterious. It was like the, some inner core that we didn't know. But today it's all, you know, biochemical. It's all. There's a map. There's a map. <laughs> it's all proteins, yeah. Yeah, neurons are firing its messages. It's all, it's just a, it's a system. It's a computer system. A lot of wires, but it's a system. But it's like a wire. You go to, you go to the wires in the house and you play with the wires and you fix it up. So why don't we know? What is it that we don't know? This is driving scientists, neuroscientists, physicists crazy. Of course, those who are more, you know, open to uh, deeper truths recognize that there's an infinity behind it all. There's an infinity behind it all. That infinity, you're not going to be able to put your finger on. You could put the finger, everything we're seeing are symptoms. It's a to the impact. So different in, huh? The ray of the sun, which is very powerful and incredible. And, and, and it's a tremendous blessing. What we know is unbelievable in terms of healing and, and advancement, etc. But it's not the etzem. It's not the etzem haneshama. It's not the etzem of the world. It's not. It's just not that. The interesting thing is that even scientists will know there is a there is a uh, intelligent design, but they will not attribute intelligent design to humans that we possess any knowledge of the same. Right. So that uh, and therefore artificial intelligence can surpass uh, human because that's the way they understood. It. Right. There's no there's no understanding of the shaman. Right. So right. If you see a person in terms of the hispashtus only, indeed, intelligent design is, um, is the only thing that's left. <laughs> Somebody told me that he is a big businessman, and he told me a few weeks ago that he, uh, he met Bill Gates the night before at a dinner. So he asked Bill Gates if he was young today, and he's starting his life over, what would be his, uh, what would he invest in? Like, where would he put his life into? So he said to me, he said, without skipping a heartbeat, he says, artificial intelligence, not a question. That's, uh, <laughs> that's where everything is. <laughs> AI, artificial intelligence, that's, it's not a question. And it was very interesting to hear, you know, because that's really, I mean, it's incredible, right? Say in a few years, 80% of jobs, a mom is going to be superfluous. You're running a pizza shop, yeah? I call the pizza shop. I speak to the artificial intelligent uh, CEO. <laughs> so we want three pies of pizza, yeah? He doesn't give me an attitude. <laughs> In fact, he asks you what you like. <laughs> exactly. Yeah, and he'll tell me, and he'll tell me what I had the last six years. Whenever we ordered it, Mitzvah Shabbos, right? He gave you five stars. Or it tells you already had calories for the day. Yeah, yeah whatever you want, and and, they del- and three minutes later, it's by the fo- by by the, this, uh, and with the drone, it's not going to take three minutes. <laughs> so, huh? The truth is, the Rambam describes it at the end of Hilchus Malachim. Huh? The Rambam says, Ba'isi Hazman, there's going to be a time. Quote, this is 850, 900 years ago. No hunger, no war, no jealousy, no business competitiveness. Because goodness will be in abundance, all the delicacies, anything good in the world is going to be as common as dust. And then the Ramam's question is, so what are we going to do all day? So he says, So the Rambam, Hilchus Malachim, the end of the last sec, the last halacha of the whole of Rambam. That's what he says. What's the whole world going to be doing? Divine awareness. Basically, learning Lakota <laughs> Taira. That's why the Bavram says, it's Ganadin. That's what the Rambam says. That's what your mother was telling you. 
Shalom Aleichem. This class is brought to you by the yeshiva.net. Please help us continue the classes. Make even a small contribution at www.theyeshiva.net slash donate.